Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ronak uh, from agarwalronak.com. Welcome back to a new episode today. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, and discussing with uh, with Kevin, which I'll shortly introduce. But uh, we'll be touching on uh, his experience in the unified communication contact center space. What are the market trends he's seeing? Uh, because he's working in this space uh, for quite some time. Uh, we we, are, we have been working together in the past as well. What are the vendor vendor landscapes he feels uh, are doing well right now? You know how how things are spanning across the globe across different vendors. What is experience management for him, and what is the future outlook he has? So it's going to be an interesting uh, session today because Kevin uh, is an experienced, seasoned uh, uh, technology expert in this uh, UC and CC space, and uh, you know you're going to hear a lot about these topics from his experience. Uh, for the day, the daily work that he's doing and so on. So I'd like to introduce uh, Kevin to you. Uh, Kevin, so uh, what do you do? How, how's your journey so far in the unified communication contact center space and what do you do in your daily work? Hey, hi, Ronak. How are you doing? And, you. Uh, and thank you for having me on your podcast. It's really, really nice of you to kind of uh, get me some time on your space and uh, gratitude to you. No, that's how it start. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, well, to start with, honestly speaking, uh, it's been an amazing journey, 16 years, and I didn't make the wrong decision. So I think uh, my journey has been fantastic uh, in the UC space. And we've always evolved with uh, with the skill set that we have. And both of, both of us have obviously worked in the same organization in our past. So, you know, the, 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 the drive to get you to that space has been so important that I've never stopped learning, keep on evolving yourself. So, so there, are, there, there will be these nooks and crannies where you need to keep on up, upskilling. Yeah. Uh, and there will be text that will update itself uh, uh, when you go in this particular journey. So that's the reason why uh, the new bug, buzzword is AI. So your know, upskilling, learning the LLM modules and everything is going to kind of uh, help you grow. And that's the reason why I'm here to talk about it today. And so looking for a fantastic podcast session. Great, Kevin. So, and and I know we have worked in the past, know, know a lot about each other, but, uh, you know, maybe if you can touch upon your journey and what do you do in your daily current role and how are you trying to inspire others? Uh, because with so much of experience that you have, you know, often uh, people with a lot of experience don't come out open to the world sharing experience, which is so important, I feel, because the technology is radically changing these days. Yeah, the whole landscape for the matter is changing. It's just not uh, one specific word to use, but the whole landscape is changing completely. Like, uh, in, in its old dynamics, for example, um, earlier people used to stay in their cybers but are moving out of the cell, talking about data center, talking about security, talking about uh, UCAS, talking about CCAS, talking about a lot of stuff. So the way I have come into the space is primarily, I work in a BFSI sector. I primarily deal with a lot of uh, CC contact center space, unified communications. Uh, I deal with a lot of Zoom stuff right nowadays, but we're moving away from a lot of things that we from uh, the inorganic uh, right. or uh, age technology and we move more to cloud-based platform. Mm -hmm. So I'm more towards the Zoom space. Uh, talking about uh, the environments that we talk about, we, talk, uh, we not only do Zoom, we do, do Teams mm -hmm. and uh, Teams uh, direct routing and all that stuff. But but then again, my personal interest is in the UCAS space and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm wanting to understand being in cast enthusiast. So I'm learning I'm learning like you know, learning at every stage. So that's right. why I'm here. And I was 16 years of experience. I'm still learning. I still feel that I'm at day one learning new things. But it's fantastic journey so far and that's the energy that I carry with me every day. So that's what's so important to me. And I feel like more energy to people around me who are right. listening to this podcast. So so this has been a very short and crisp introduction for me. And this is what I am. Thank you. Right. And, and again, just for everybody's knowledge, Kevin is very active on LinkedIn and social media, sharing his experiences, uh, sharing his views of the different technology uh, that has been uh, invented or, you know, um, 
inventory for the organizations across the globe uh, for UCAS, CCAS, and I'll link the uh, details, uh, his details below. But uh, but it's so important, you know. You don't. It's so important to learn from experiences, and and with his experience, EFSI and what he's sharing, uh, it's so crucial. So, Kevin, in in your day to day life, because BFSI is so crucial sector, and moving to cloud technology is so, you know, you can't get away from without moving to cloud. What are the kind of typical challenges you have seen uh, uh, in this space, especially for a BFSI sector using moving into cloud? For the BFSI space, technically, as a, a, a like a UC engineer or, or an architect, you first need to make sure that uh, the first thing that people ask you is security. How yeah. are you care getting secure? Yeah, because you you may nobody talks about it, but you may end up getting hacked. Yeah. But how do you save yourself from all these kinds of stuff? Because the finance sector is. In a minute, and then you will be under ransomware. So first thing, where well, before going to the cloud, you will make sure that you have your SOC level one, SOC level two cert yeah. uh, certified vendors, making sure that you have the right space, green energy, because more of the financial sectors are aligning themselves to have a uh, green energy data center. Right. They, they are running on clean energy. So those are the basic uh, fundamentals that people look out for, uh, and making the right cho choices. Uh, is so important when you talk about a data center. It's just not so. Uh, yeah. It's not pertaining to uh, what you want to get to from a data center point of view, but also to understand the fact that uh, what are the dependencies on of on prem. You know, does right. it actually make sense to move to the cloud when you're talking about uh, moving technology? Uh, but from my perspective, most of the uh, organization, the BS file center, are moving. And security is one big factor. Second is making sure that the infrastructure cost, the uh, tech debt is less. Right. What is your ROI? It's so important. Talking about all these factors that people don't really. And you can't really sell things which are not really wanted. So you need to talk about stuff technically. Right. What is needed? What's really burning you? Why you need to move to the cloud? It right. doesn't make sense to move the cloud until this is not working. So for a small organization, not really important from a small bank or something, but for bigger organization, Yes, it makes sense because on-prem dependencies are less. So that's the reason why moving towards the cloud with all these kept in mind is so uh, are really important. Factors to so right. right. I think in summary, what you're saying is, uh, I, I think for finance sector, security is even bigger concern, but in general, security is, a, you know, I think right now, uh, it's one of the biggest concerns that has when you're moving to cloud and then second obviously tech depth and on-prem infrastructure does it make sense to have on-prem yes you could have associated long-term costs with beat support cost or whatever exactly exactly so your opex cost and your kps cost are something that people long term talk about and the opex cost is something that you keep on thinking about hey you know what right. what is going to cost me like give me the actual numbers right. so then then you need to have your budgets in mind when you you Right. Forecast here for the year, right? right. So 2024, 2025, well, how much is it going to cost me? How much is my tech debt? All these factors are so important. Right. So th that's the reason why you keep it very simple, making sure that, all right, it's a reasonable ask to move on to the right. Why you talk about all these factors. Right. No, no, it's, I, I mean, I think wherever I've spoken to anybody, <laughs> these are some of the important things, you know, even in my daily job, uh, these are uh, the core uh, principles or of, of a customer that this is what they are looking to do and uh, yeah but in your in your view because you have uh, experience across uh, contact center you see and you know what are the trends that you're seeing right now in this space ai is one driving factor right now it's like a big yeah. word like to be honest right. or that it's just come up today we've been speaking about it for the past 10 years right, right. and uh, i don't know if anyone's kind of heard about this but Large language models has always been like uh, from root to uh, like so on right, right now. And we've already evolved ourselves into moving in that space. Right. And it's only a matter of time when we actually see it in our day to day lives. Right. Uh, right. Generally speaking, like for example, I've been using Grammarly uh, on my day to day use at times on my personal communications. 
and yeah. it's healthy, but it's a form of AI, it's a language model which was used to enhance your uh, grammar right. and provide writing emails. So those are few nuances which subconsciously you're using AI and you never knew that you're using AI. But, mm -hmm. but the thing is, AI is a very uh, driving factor. Security, the cloud computing factor is uh, so important. And um, contact center is uh, now cloud. Uh, I think yeah. on prem, but nobody wants to be on prem. Everyone wants to move to the cloud. Uh, and affordability of services. Um, when you're talking about a large organization, how much does it actually cost to get a contact center? Yeah. Well, if I talk about this, us five years. Everyone would be mesmerized with the number. So a number, it's all about the number game, right? So people will really start talking about it. Yeah, it makes a lot of difference. So from on-prem to cloud, I think has made a drastic change with uh, vendors such as Zoom and everything. And right. how they've encompassed uh, AI into this, they are particular product suit has helped them evolve. Right. And, uh, and it's just not about feature set, it's about fatigue. Fatigue loss for an agent sitting in the contact center. Yeah. Understand all those factors that ans helping answer people's question, uh, making sure it's precise and it's correct. Like you know, what is the accuracy of getting that information out to your you know, for, to the right. customer? All the said and done is that then it comes to your CX and EX, which is your customer experience and your end user experience. How do you rate yourself? How do you grow and evolve? Right now, I think. Technology is primarily focus on in, focusing on this particular factor, on enhancing this. I think people have come out in the open talking about CX events a lot. So that's the reason why you've seen a lot of CX events happening, talking about, hey, you know what, it's so important that nobody's been talking about it. And now that people are out there talking about it, it makes sense for people to take initiatives to understand from a contact center point of view. If I sit out there, how am I going to enhance my customer experience? How am I going to enhance my end user experience? What are the nuances that I need to take as the steps or the certain frameworks to help and enhance my end user experience? Uh, those are very crucial. So all in all, there are a few leading vendors, I will mean, say, like Zoom, for example, like Nice, for example, like Genesis, for example, have spearheaded this particular space and tried to do their best. Right. So, so Cisco is not like that, and they are catching up right now with right. their fantastic uh, uh, tool right now. So, so yeah, so, so you'll see a lot of uh, inciting, insightful information coming. Right. 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 Yeah, I think it's all about uh, yeah, it's all about customer retention, and uh, yeah. how do you retain that customer is is by giving them a good experience, fixing their problems as quickly as possible, maybe exactly. solving the problems also sometimes. Yeah. So yeah. I I I have this particular thing. How can you be more proactive than being reactive? How can AI help you be more proactive than reactive? Right, right. right. Uh, I have something that I eventually will plan on where we can do proactive monitoring where we know about incoming vulnerabilities, we know about incoming issues that we have when it comes to bug, bug fixes and everything. We are where we are being proactive rather than being reactive saying, hey, you know what, this is what you need to do, apply a patch. Where we are more reactive saying we know about this, it's already been applied to your patch. And you don't need to wait for someone to tell you and this bug was patched for X and right, right, right. reason and it's already done. And then you can level here yeah, and what we should Right. Level I think that's this. where the importance of cloud uh, solutions becomes very important. Exactly. exactly. And you can't measure that with the the I think capex opex is one discussion, but the capability versus the capex you can't really compare because at the end of the day maybe opex is more than capex for a certain solution, but yeah, the that you get is is you know infinitely higher than what you Hi. capex. Yes, very true. I agree to that. I so resonate with that. Uh, yeah. because... so it's so crucial. It's not just financial game, but also. I think as an organization, I've realized that, uh, I mean, that uh, it's important to have goals in mind, what you're trying to achieve, even for us as content creators, it's important and, for the goal. Yeah, it's so, it's so Very important. True. And Golden then, words spoken. Yes. <laughs> Golden words. So for an any IT organization, you need to make sure that 
having a goal, long term vision. Right. Is as crucial as having a short term vision. So right. that's very crucial. So, uh, Kevin, one question I've had, and uh, because of after COVID, it's all been remote work and now hybrid work. How do you see this uh, technology has impacted remote work, or or is it, in your opinion, uh, because of the technology that we have today, it is easier to do remote work and hybrid work, and you can have a mix. And how do you address these kind of impacts? Because as an organization, if I'm moving to cloud, and uh, and people are working from home and office and I don't know, you know, where I'm working from today, afternoon also, because I may be in a cafe somewhere or whatever. How do you address this, the impact of all technology on remote work and hybrid work? So let me answer this question. Aren't you happy sometimes when you're working from home, you have a lot of flexibility, uh, doing everything, but then again, you start remembering in this office, but at the same time, you work a little more extra. I prefer giving quality work, uh, for the amount of time that I put in, making sure that I'm there to help and make sure that there's no issues, uh, making sure that KTO and everything you are doing BAU as 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 planned. Right. So, right. so that's one important particular factor that you need to keep in mind. Uh, you are actually going to sh see the shift. We are going to see a hybrid model and how it's significantly impacting. Customer service. Okay. Eventually, it's going to accelerate and uh, and it's going to take time for adoption for contact center and all these spaces for right. all the companies. The transition is basically enabled by businesses like at a high level. Okay. It needs maintenance and then it needs service continuity. Uh, adaptability right. is go always going to be there despite the geographical depression uh, you know, dispersion of the workforce. It's like all around the world, how everyone is going to work in that particular state. Now, for example, like a global retail um, company was like, you know, was able to swiftly move all its customer service operations from a remote setup as pandemic. You know? Now, because of CCAS, thanks to CCAS, now what ensured this was their customer service representatives had access to cloud using the same tools, data, communication channels for from home. So they didn't really have to start worrying about so being physically available in the call center. Right. So what helped them moreover is the scalability and the flexibility uh, that was offered by CCAS. Right. Uh, I, I will not take the actual company with data, but uh, I was given this from a specific uh, partner of mine who helped me out understand dynamics, how hybrid uh, right, right. setup worked for them. And for that particular CCAS technology that had allowed them to kind of move to handle fluctuating call volumes and integrate their new communication channels you know, uh, to understand their customer preferences, then eventually it moved towards like their online interaction that helped them right. like, focus on, on, on precise communication to their customers. Right, right, right. So this, this eventually helped them sustain, in some cases, enhance their customer satisfaction also. Right. Uh, involving a lot of engagement, demonstrating critical roles and everything that was defined by the criteria for your CCAS. They have certain criteria, that they work on certain criteria. Like, uh, like we have CSAT level, we have um, C, uh, like all the certification and right. all that that they did. It. So, so that helped them support their uh, remote work also. Uh, and okay. a lot of environments made sure that they were robust, flexible, effective and uh, in their communication and service operations. So a lot of companies like, you know, for example, teleperformance or these contact centers, these are you know, heavily contact center based uh, technology. So imagine not being able to walk into a physical office. So that's so important for them that things were made easy in pandemic to understand how they moved over from a physical to a home based location, having the same repeated tools. So so I've just told about uh, the organization who used it, but the technology that they used was uh, a lot different. Right, right, right. So, so, so you yeah. think, uh, in this, uh, I think uh, when I think about uh, customer service and contact center solutions, um, if let's say there are, you know, 100 calls in a day that, that the agents are picking up and we know that they are working remotely, but if, if my... 60% of the calls can be picked up by my bots 
or some kind of automated agent and they resolve their issue. The workload also is Reduced. best for remote work. So I think yes. so in your in your in your uh, opinion, uh, if we, would this make sense that you know if we have hundred percent effort, then if we have fifty percent effort by bots, then it's easier to create a strategy for remote work for fifty percent because you don't have to cater to a large database of calls. Correct. Um, I agree to this to a certain extent. I'll tell you why. My my take on this is we need to have more use cases. Right. We need to have more uh, more uh, understanding towards how you collaborate with your uh, partners or your end, end customers right. on, to enable them. Right. Uh, once you understand that you know a certain context like a uh, very heavily customer dependent uh, contact center environment, what help you solve problems? Then why not? Use them, leverage them because they are there to solve problems. Right. Now, with the generic bots that you have, they do the job for you. But then, as and when you advance, there are a lot of emotions that play, which are currently solved by bots. On, uh, if I were talking about this in 2019, generic bots would not be able to understand emotions right. that solving right. your problem. But now, in 2024, I think 2023, 2024, it's there. That we have that tech to kind of right. help you create those bots to understand emotions and helping you get you the answer that you need. And you will not find a hundred percent, but at least if you have your success criteria, say ninety percent, eighty-eight percent, or something which is on plus fifty side, which is good. This will help you improve a lot of uh, check marks that you have to uh, to reduce your uh, burden on. Uh, Right. So yes, I agree to that. Right. But yes, that's my take. No, I agree with you. I I think uh, use case uh, the effectiveness of the use case uh, is very important because I have had experiences where I've called an airline and I'm sitting with the bot for three hours and nothing has moved. Exactly. I will not call that airline next time, and I may not even fly them next time. Exactly. So and uh, uh, for example. Air India, uh, there are multiple other organizations like who have been moved away and right. the data is helping them with their contact center skills also. So now you see a lot of change, for example, our home country uh, airline to use uh, fantastic technology and you will see a lot of things changing. As long as you have the right investment, the right place, making the right, like putting it in the right space, nothing's going to change. Uh, and uh, until unless that effort is put in, so you will see a lot of change happening in the next coming years. And I'm really excited to kind of right. uh, seeing the more opportunities, more innovation happening yeah. with AI. And I think that yeah. that, that will uh, that will definitely have. Uh, I think people, whoever is listening, uh, because of rapid technology change, you also need to learn new stuff on a daily basis or Very have plans because you know. You, you can become irrelevant in no time Very at all. True. Very true. So you need to upskill. Always upskill. Yeah. So that's the way I see it. You upskill yourself, making sure you're relevant, stay yeah. connected with people in your industry. It's so important. Um, like an actor who doesn't kind of prepare for himself for the role will never Correct. be the uh, best actor for for, uh, for the for the film. So. Right. Even like singers, I, I I think of this example a lot. I've never spoken about this, but even singers, they do daily riyas or riyas. practice exactly. daily. They don't yeah. go to the uh, studio and just sing the song. They practice it for years. Exactly, exactly. And it's all about your know, practice. You understand this basic stuff, uh, nuances that you need to keep in mind. This uh, yeah. like always, and and it's the you can use auto tune, but yeah. people know. People are not foolish. <laughs> So, so, so it's, it's, it's really important to keep yourself. Uh, I think that's why these, the relevance of this kind of podcast is so important because, uh, you know, what I'm trying to do is speak to people who are in the field, hands-on experience, they can share their experience, knowledge. That's why these podcasts are so relevant, um, for people who are listening. Very true. Very true. And I, maybe in the next few months down the line, I think I will host one and I'll, I'll have you of on course. my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll surely have a fantastic time and uh, we'll talk about technology and life in general also. 
right. uh, about a lot of other things apart from uh, our technology. So yeah, looking forward to that also. Of course, of course. I mean, obviously, it's so it's so good. Uh, uh, but uh, moving on to the topic, Kevin, uh, in your uh, experience, because you have uh, said Zoom a few times, because I think you use Zoom <laughs> in, um, organization and wherever you have used. What what are the which are the leading vendors you see in this space? And as what is because of your experience, which one do you generally prefer using? Uh, now, see, I'm, I'm a Cisco guy. Yeah. Yeah. The whole beat, like if you would open my heart and yeah. start up saying this. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I've taken pains to understand it. Sometimes I've never understood it. Yeah. And uh, let's be honest, we've been there, we've done that, we know how it is. I've been in the same boat. It's, it's <laughs> what you're saying. So, so, fantastic journey with Cisco. Uh, somewhere, I think they had lost their path in the unified communication space. Right. It's been difficult for them, no doubt. It's, they have their ups and downs. Right. I think the, the leadership out there didn't really focus on unified communication. But then again, uh, 2023 was a game changer for them in the UCAS space. Uh, they've right. learned a lot and uh, they've grown, they shape. shaped, uh, they've bought a new stuff. Uh, right. The WebEx one is a fantastic tool. Right. That I see if correctly marketed, it's going to be right. a big game changer going forward. Just if, if they have the right marketing done, you right. will see that going. If somehow they can work on pricing with uh, with uh, the current competitors, yeah. uh, it's going to do a fantastic job, uh, especially yeah. with uh, especially with their uh, hardware and their licensing. Something right. if that can be done is fantastic. Right. Um, Zoom is another very fantastic tool. Uh, it's evolved. They had uh, rough knocks, like you know, if you had, uh, if you're in a boxing ring and uh, they have been taking punches left, right, and center, they scaled right. up with their data centers, trying to be more green and everything. But uh, but yeah, they're getting there. They're they're there. You will find a lot of glitches, uh, but uh, they're they're. Game changer is their pricing, uh, not so they are the hardware that they sell. Uh, best part is they are, have they have an open market. They have multi vendor vendor vendors to access their uh, platform. Uh, right. If I they have to name a few, uh, like Polycom and uh, the T10, all these companies out there, uh, Jabra for the matter, uh, and Logitech, all these companies are out there. They're from all ranges, from best high tech to everything, but they have the same set of problems, honestly. Right, right, right. You know, I'll tell you why. If I have an issue with Polycom, they'll ask me to upgrade their OS. Right. Then I have a data issue, I'll have to upgrade the OS over there. Then I have to come back to Zoom, upgrade the OS over there. Then you, know, you start wondering, right. it's not a good end user experience that I'm having. I'm, I'm, like, what am I doing? Again, right. back to Cisco. I never had a, if I had a problem, I used to be reached to one person, hey, no, right. Cisco, I have a problem. Can you right. help me? Right. I used to open up a ticket. So that is a drastic change that you need to circle back and that's the trouble that you go through. Right. Again, with again with upskilling yourself, you need to make that so that journey by understanding what, you can't look at logs over at times. So you're blinded and saying, you know, your dependency remains on their uh, contract with their helpline, with their customer service. So that, again, somewhere, that comfort which you have been a Cisco person, like, oh, Cisco, right. Right. coming, transitioning to do all these platform is going to be a tough challenge. You something have to adapt and move on, right. saying, you know what, saying that, like, take a hit on your heart and say, going on, yes. But Zoom is a very good competitor, all in all. Uh, right. There is tough competition. Uh, it doesn't take time to, for things to change and the landscape to move on have someday you'll have snow, someday you'll have a green sunny yeah. green sunshine with green fields. But it's never uh, never say no that you you know there will be good competition. So so the, uh, for me it's I I'm, I'm still gonna say Zoom is good number one for me right now and the current trajectory the space like as for Gartner also. Um 
Cisco's there, then you have uh, Genesis, then you have all the other vendors who are there. But uh, I've heard not good about, I had the opportunity to use Nice uh, to a common friend of mine. I understand their technology also. Nice CX, they're, they're very concentrated and very focused when it comes to their technology. Mm-hmm. And it's more custom built. Everything is embedded. Everything is done through them. Like you have in the SBC contact centers for, for their outbound call, also done primarily all in-house. So you don't need to worry. Everything is done. So you don't have a chance to be by OC. You don't have to bring your own car- carrier in. You just have to do it yourself. So, so for, for me, again, that's like a plus. Like, you know, but nobody actually talks about nice. Nobody talks about Genesis a lot. But uh, I'm just going to tell you that these are uh, organizations or these are the vendors who are making landscape cheap. Correct. Correct. These are the technologies which are going to help to shape them. And yes, that's the reason why these are the top vendors that I see, honestly speaking. Um, right. But yeah, so um, contact center space, Twilio, 5.9. Yeah, these are there. But then they have a lot of API stuff uh, driven approach also. Right, right, so right. Let me see customization and all the flexibility depending on if you're the owner. Uh, your BFSR sector, or your uh, uh, all your uh, the armies of all the world, and uh, you know, for any other sector for the education and all this stuff. So they cater to all the sectors. They customize the flexibility of you know, getting into things. Um, now, Twilio, for example, Twilio's platform is like now uh, is more designed for developers and by developers, right, right, right. and making it more versatile. Honestly. Uh, for the all choices of business, uh, they because they, they, they tailor to their contact center solution like what your needs are, how you specifically innovate uh, rapidly, scale efficiently. That those are the important driving factors. No company is going to remain in their own side. They are going to grow because they need to invest. They get more investment. They want to open new centers. They want to get more products. They need to get stuff done. So they need to be efficient in scaling up. Right. Uh, all these factors are very, very important. Now, they have a, they have a very comprehensive suite of services, like including voice, specific video, and uh, coupled with, with a very strong sense of security practice, commitment right. to continuous innovation. Right. So positioning with Twilio is compelling by choice, okay, for organization, honestly, that's one. Right. And right. that's another product that I'm like surely talking about future proofing for, for future communication. This is right. and uh, that you will see something that is growing and coming up. Nobody again talks about it. So video mm-hmm. five nine. Five nine you know about how Zoom kind of in between uh, try to acquire it. Yeah. And uh, you know how they backed out making sure their market valuation went high and then they came back. Okay. And again, uh, rumors were spread that uh, finally someone would buy it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was thinking uh, service now would buy it. But uh, no, no. I, I thought sales sales was a buy it. But uh, yeah, I, uh, these are the only two technology companies who actually have the money to kind of buy. Right. That is still under wraps, I think, uh, here in some way. Right, right. Yeah. You know, it's a competing space. Uh, I think yeah. a lot of these. Uh, Newer vendors, I should say, uh, you know, one thing I've seen, a uh, lot of the vendors, uh, for example, uh, you know, could be Zoom or could be Ring Central or, or others, where they are positioning their product as a complete UC and CC product. They just don't sell unified communication and exactly. or contact center. They will have a complete suite. So what, what I think what they're what, what I think from them their strategy is to compete with Microsoft. You can't compete selling a UC solution because Cisco is failing badly there. So very bad. Yeah. So Microsoft has bundled their uh, unified communication or cloud uh, C, uh, cloud app um, UC with their Office three sixty five licensing, which which you can't compete because. Almost, I would say, I don't know, I don't know the numbers, but 90% of the organizations or 80% are using Outlook or some form of Office 365. And they're selling teams for free there. So you can't compete with that offering. So what these Zoom and other vendors have started doing is they're selling, creating their own niche and selling 
uh, a cloud UC and CC solution combined so that it's kind of separating from the leak. They don't want to compete with Microsoft. Nobody wants to compete with Microsoft, but they have created their own. Uh, uh, I think similar to what Amitabh Bachchan had uh, one dialogue in one movie, Jahan se mein khada hota, wahan se line shuru ho yes. so it's similar. They are trying to create their own niche and create their own market yes. uh, rather than competing because Cisco tried competing, but you know how things are. And not that Cisco's products are bad. It's just that Microsoft had a better strategy in terms of uh, positioning itself very well. Correct. correct. <laughs> because uh, if you notice with Microsoft, I, I, the reason why I didn't take Microsoft name because her her ke, uh, kitchen may put that and this like Tata Namak like correct, correct, like correct. that. Right so Microsoft is there by default. I am not even say numbers by ten percent only hardly anyone uses correct, Google, correct. Google Mail or Gmail or something. Correct, uh, correct. Business, uh, so the numbers speak for itself. It, to be a market disruptor, uh, they need to focus more on their experience again. Uh, they have sideline teams to a certain extent, but I think it, it is going to evolve as time. Uh, there are a lot of uh, tech-driven initiatives by by uh, by the teams, uh, back-end engineers who are working on the developers who are working. They're trying to innovate, and the Microsoft law kind of tell you, you know, every month they'll have something to enhance uh, the capabilities of uh, uh, their strategies also. So, so yeah, looking forward to a lot of Microsoft initiatives. And, and nobody can compete with Microsoft. Right? Nobody should actually compete. It's not mm-hmm. that. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, with EFI licenses, how much do you think uh, yeah. it's easy to get an enterprise license? Right? And then the Teams is like by default, it's there. It's there. Right. Right. It's already there. You need to make sure uh, I see, for example, now an X company has both. They don't know to actually gauge between right. what is there and what's not there. I would rather use Microsoft Teams, honestly speaking, for uh, my and not use Zoom, for example. That's my take. But but then again, they say, no, that's because of redundancy, backup, I need to have. Right. So why? But still, okay. Some some it makes sense from a backup standpoint. Uh, yeah, I think it's also, I've it seen a uh, lot of customers having their own preferences also. So yeah, you could maybe you are using uh, uh, I don't know Cisco for internal. Yeah, whatever I think, but they don't want to get rid of a certain technology because they yeah. they have preferences and and uh, they they so, like better than Cisco or whatever. Correct, and I see more of like uh, teams being internal and. Uh, Zoom being more external. So that's again uh, a tech initiative on how we want to drive technology and adoption of people, how they use it. So it's fair enough. It's it's right. it's good to have, not bad. Correct, correct, um, correct. So so it's good to have a point of view, and it's great to have like an opinion also. So it's it's, it's right. good. It's good. So as right. long as uh, people are uh, using it, it doesn't make sense if you just give them and not not using it. So right. I see a lot of Microsoft users. Uh, teams usage than Zoom, so I, I see a lot of adaption uh, when it comes to uh, tools. That's correct. So I think it's keeping, is our, it's keeping our jobs alive also. <laughs> yeah, it's it's keeping our jobs alive. Honestly, yes, I would never disagree to that. Yeah. But yes, uh, that's a very important factor, honestly. So yeah, correct. And uh, Kevin, in your experience, what are if you know what are the best practices for selecting a UC or a contact center vendor? Because there are so many out there, and with some have good features, but some are costly. Some have a complete offering, but others have a different offering with third-party integration. So, how do you, uh, you know, what are the best, some of the best practices you have seen and used for choosing a UC and CC solution? See, uh, my 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 thought process is been such that uh, you evolve as you grow right. uh, in this space. So. So one basic stuff is the organization that you work on have different needs at times. Right. If I were working in a FMCC based company, I would I would look at scalability. I would look at security being the second thing. Okay, fair enough. Security is always going to be there as the base for you yes. to have security yeah. and secure and uh, your ROI. Like if I invest a lot, how much am I going to get in return? Right, right. And and I'm going to look at use cases or what use cases do they have. In my HMC space, for example, 
and uh, if they have use cases where they they were success, they found success in delivering that particular product, right. uh, I will leverage them services now uh, with vendors. If if vendors provide me great options, then yes. Um, for example, now and good discounts, why not? So right. so those are very basic uh, drivers when I go to see out, but. Then again, you know, when you go to an open market, you understand that uh, you will not, a customer will not only speak to one vendor, you will speak to multiple vendors. Because you get a sense of understanding between multiple vendors because they will, they have a lot to offer when it comes to uh, licensing, when it comes to uh, pricing, when it comes to all important facts, uh, uh, right. all these driving factors. Right. So. Right. They will have the subject matter experts to guide you and tell you like, no, this is what it is there. These are your burning issues. And this is how I see them getting fixed with right. using this particular text, text space. And all in all, uh, the internal factor where end users have their own ARP structure, the architecture uh, review board, right. so who look at a certain framework on why we leverage this technology and how right. we can can use it so using best cases use cases to kind of move it forward is so important so so yes one is then then if people are already adapting and you have a fellow technologists uh, in the space who can vouch for it and making you uh, uh, get the sense of uh, checking all the check boxes taking all the check boxes right. then it, it makes absolute sense to uh, get your vendors in place uh, right. But then again, it's all about the pricing. Eventually, it's about the pricing and then right. okay. the numbers peak at times. So, uh, burning issues, solving the problems, and uh, money. <laughs> so right. Right. Yeah, I think also, uh, <clears throat> I think investment protection also. If I'm yeah. asking, if I'm you know leveraging some technology and paying them, I I need to protect that at least for next five years or ten years because I don't want to invest in a company which may not even be there after five years. That's where Microsoft is, has, apart from the different uh, strategies they've had, it's it's been a robust system. It's been there for over, I think, three decades, four decades, maybe more. Yes. Uh, it's it's a, it, people call it Wall Street, Wall Street darling. So, you know, they know that they will always get a return on investment with them. Yeah. Great. So I think, uh, Kevin, I think, uh, uh, I think this would be the last, you know, one or two questions and, uh, we wrap it up, but but you know, you being in the experience space, I would like it like to call it that way. You know, in terms of contact center, customer experience, end user experience. How do you measure the experience, and like, what are your thoughts? Because, uh, you know, I, the last I think one or two years, experience has become uh, the key. Uh, I don't because companies don't mind paying more if they can get the experience. Very true. So how do you measure that and, uh, and how, what is the data that you're collecting? How, you know, what do you do with the data then? Uh, like, uh, you know, when we were working together, obviously we, we, we highly depended on CSATs. So those were, again, if, if there was a happy customer, they were for most good CSAT. Right, right. right. And, yeah, and, but apart from that, like, you know, uh, the end user driven factor is KPI, right. key performance indicators for your uh, call resolution from a contact center point of view, from a business standpoint of view. Right. So what you need to make sure is you leverage these spaces and involve a combination of quantitative metrics and qualitative feedback. Right? Right. Right. So you're, then there's KPI, you know, CSAT, and there's Net Promoter Score NPS. These will kind of gauge, not NPS kind of gauges your uh, customer loyalty and the likelihood of for recommendation. Right. And then once you use AI, okay, AI tools, they will analyze your interactions, patterns, your work, voice sentiments, even predict customer satisfaction. This Correct. is what the future I'm talking about. This is going to be. So what's always been there are your KPIs, key performance indicators, your CSAT, with your available feedback and your NPS. How it's going to be is like I've already told you, your voice recognition is going to tell your sentiment. If right. I'm really irated, I'm, uh, it's all good, uh, going to be there. You won't really be sending right. indirect information. Because right. right now, our interaction is being captured by AI. And if you really ca recapture it while you 
end up getting to get a lot of more information. Right. So right. if I summarize this, like a company might kind kind of do speech analytics to eventually identify right. common complaints, point of frustration during the calls and all that stuff, allowing targeted improvements to customer experience in their processes. Right. All this will eventually come to your surveys and like feedbacks and all this stuff. And right. will give you your nuanced understanding for user experience. That's going to be there. Right. And then you can adjust it based on your criteria of how you're using contact center and your find applications. So right. apart from this, like your comprehensive approach, um, with a holistic view of performance, satisfaction, and with guiding continuously improving your efforts are right. so crucial that that you can never get away from it. You know, these are going to be the crucial drivers right. for right. it. So to summarize this, KPI is CSAT MPS, but the future of AI is always going to be there. Your voice, before. how you speak, it's going to get captured and give you analytics eventually to that particular information in real time rather than waiting for someone to get back. So right. this is what I see. Yeah, I current think, to the future. Yeah, I think I've seen those uh, <clears throat> videos where you get uh, real time uh, uh, analysis That's... of the emotion of the customer speaking and you can modulate your sentences accordingly to the way the yeah. customer is speaking. I think it was, was Satin Nadella or someone kind of ordered a pizza or it was uh, Sundar Pichai who ordered a pizza using AI uh, and it sounded like a real voice uh, ordering yeah. pizza. So that's something that we're looking out for in the future. So. Yeah. Even as I've created my own uh, portfolio video and I use AI, but when you hear that, you would not even realize it's AI. It's so natural, and uh, and companies. That's fantastic. Yeah, and companies use. Uh, I mean, not companies, but you know, in in my personal space, or many people use it for free. It's you know, you you can get a free subscription for a few minutes or whatever hour. At least, at least it'll do the job for you. Yeah. Right. I think this is the last question, uh, Kevin, uh, because it, this space is so exciting. Uh, how do you see the, uh, you know, UCCC world shape up in the next five years? I'm sure, you know, you have already touched upon a lot of aspects throughout this session. We have, I don't know if it's even gone beyond one hour now. Uh, but... It's gone. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, Absolutely it's... fine. I'm, I, I, oh, a Sunday well spent is more important. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, but yeah, so... So you're talking about the question regarding... Uh, yeah, it, I mean, I think you can wrap this up as well in a sense that what is your view of the future, which which you've already... Maybe a summary of your views of how things will shape up in the future and and your closure statement that way so that we can uh, give the audience a good gist of what we have discussed. Okay. Um, five years. You see space is going to undergo significant transformation. Right. Uh, not, not largely driven by your advancements in AI, machine right. learning. AI will shape the space of automation. Okay. Complex processes will be like customize, uh, customizing and personalizing customer interactions. Right, right. Uh, these eventually are going to be more deeper analytics for your decision making. That's one a very good aspect that you will be eventually see. We'll be seeing like an AI enabling real-time sentiment analysis and all that I've already spoke about in my last question. Right. Right. And right. then your predictive analytics, which I already spoke about, your monitoring stuff, which right. Uh, right. I spoke in my few questions earlier. These are very, like, you know, something that you will foresee. And, uh, like, we've already seen a lot of uh, intelligent routing when we work with Cisco and all that stuff. Right. Right. Uh, these are going to eventually... Get, get you to your dynamic conversations, how you adjust them and all that stuff. So to master these uh, evolving technologies, uh, one professional should always look at scaling up. Right, scaling right, up. Right, right. Learning your LLMs, um, understanding how AI integrations work with UC platforms, right. learning to leverage AI data analysis and insights, and gaining proficiency in AI development. Right. All those frameworks, how ethical AI is, use data privacy, how you use them. Um, so skill set is how you will set uh, uh, and you will eventually be more valuable in enhancing your customer experience and user. Right. That's how I summarize it. Uh, so which will drive innovation uh, for your context. No, of course. I mean, I think this is uh, the best summary that 
this is the this is this i mean the current episode is all about the summary that you said it's uh, it's an excellent uh, wrap up to you know what we have spoken in the past one hour uh, you know and if if it will help people understand and uh, you know what's happening in the market i will obviously link your uh, uh, linkedin bio thank you so much and uh, no problem and, uh, and and i think kevin thank you again uh, for giving time we have spoken about Fantastic. this in the past it's it's been great experience uh, recording this with you thank you yeah. thank it's you for this good. opportunity especially uh, we've been going back and forth a lot and uh, mm-hmm. but yeah finally we, uh, we did it and i'm really happy about this and uh, looking forward to for more collaboration i think uh, of course which we'll be talking about a lot of other stuff also but uh, yeah thank you Yeah, no, of course, definitely. Yeah, I, I, in, yeah, I mean, it's it's been great, Kevin. Uh, thank you once right. again for joining in today. Thank right. you.